Hey guys, I was getting ready to sit down and make some incense and I thought it had been a while since I had um, done any videos on this. Um, it's, it's one of the things that I actually really like to do. When I started, um, I had a different channel um, and I ended up getting rid of it and I wish I hadn't now, but I kind of started some of those videos on this channel and then I just kind of um, fell out of it. I, I guess I just didn't get back into it once I started getting into the bath stuff, you know. But um, I do have a few videos up back um, it's early on in this channel so if you wanted to look at those you can go back and look at those um, but there's only a few anyway going to sit down make some incense and I kind of had some of my stuff out and I thought maybe there's some people that would be interested um, I make powdered incense but I also like to make self combustible incense and there's different ways that you can do that. Um, but anyhow, we may get into that in a different video. I was just going to show you guys some of the things. Now you can use, first of all, a lot of videos that you'll watch, people use a lot of things that you can, um, like herbs, different things like that. For example, cinnamon. I actually like the way, I think cinnamon smells pretty good when you burn it. But something to know is that a lot of herbs that people put in incense that you put like on a charcoal disc and you burn it it's not going to smell good y'all a lot of that don't smell good like rose petals rose petals does not smell good it smells like burning vegetation it doesn't <laughs> well and i should say to me to me somebody out there might like the way rose petals um smell if you burn them but um Generally, you can find things, um, like if you go looking at an incense shop, in general, you're not going to find um, um, ingredients like that um, in incense just because you don't get the really good sweet smells or some of the smells that you would associate with like a traditional incense, right? So, here are some of the things that you can use that smell good or to me it smells good. <laughs> um, some people might smell some of this stuff and be like, mm -mm, it stinks. Uh, some people prefer a lot of the synthetic smells. Um, and I'm one of them. I, I like that too. Anyway, I'll, I'll get to rambling here, guys. But there's a lot of different options that you can get for a lot of the um, different ingredients to use. Um, a lot of the, this is a lot of the things that I like to use. Um, when you're making an incense, y'all, let me put this in the beginning. Because these are kind of some um, kind of hard and fast rules for incense making that I have um, found, I've read, or I've discovered over the years. Um, there's not a whole lot of videos, and I get a lot of, um, I like to watch YouTube. I'm, I learn by watching. That's my preferred method of learning. Um, but there's not a whole lot of stuff on YouTube at all about incense making um, so I thought I'd put this one on here um, one thing when you're making a powdered incense one of the loose incense that you're just gonna like have a charcoal disc and it's burning or it's hot it's not burning anymore but it's hot and you sprinkle over it there's really not much rules to that as far as um, ratios of things now, if you're making, wanting to make a self-combustible incense, that is more, um, you have to be more careful with that. Um, sorry, I thought Boo was going to bust up on in here. Okay, um, hard and fast rules. Let's see. Um, if, when making cone incense, you have to be careful about your ratios of resins to woods and powders also try to make sure that you grind everything down uniformly if you don't your burns not going to be consistent it's going to spit and sputter and it might burn good on one side and not in another area because your um, the size of your materials isn't the same 
it's like cooking if you're frying a piece of meat you want it the same thickness throughout that way it's going to cook evenly right makes sense okay so you want to grind everything down evenly um, your resins typically are going to grind easier in like a mortar and pestle than say um I had a brain fart there, guys. I had to look at the top there. Vetiver root. Um, a lot of your woody or plant materials are going to be a little harder to grind in a mortar and pestle. Vetiver root. I love the smell of it. I think it smells awesome. But that sucker, oh, it gives me fits when you're trying to grind it. It's just, mm, you have to grind it a while, take out the big pieces, get your powder out, put it back, grind it some more. It's it's heck if you have pro problems with carpal tunnel. <laughs> So anyway, um, another another thing, um, a tip, if you're going to grind, um, before you grind up your, um, your resins, throw them in the freezer. Some resins are easier to break up than others. Some are very gummy when you go to break them up. So if you have them in the freezer, they'll break apart a little faster for you. And the quicker that you can grind them up in that mortar and pestle, the better because the more you do it, the warmer they're going to get and they're going to start getting sticky and gummy on you down in the, the bottom of your mortar and pestle. And then you're going to have to put dry ingredients like your powders in there to kind of get them loose. Um, what else? Um, oh, your ratios. I was going into that and then got sidetracked. Um, the ratios that you want to use. Um, I had read somewhere, I can't remember where, right off the top of my head, but they had a rule that your ratio of your, um, your resins to your woods needs to be like, it, your your gums and resins needs to be a third of whatever um, your powdered and your woody ingredients are. They should be two thirds of your recipe so that your gums and resins are a third. There, that's what I'm trying to say, guys. Um, I have found a lot of times that it works better if I use gums and resins, I, if I bring that down to a fourth. That's what works best for me. Now, you, you might be able to, to get it to work um, differently for you, but that's how I do it. Also, a lot of people um, that I know that make incense, they use um, sawdust. Um, you can get a lot of different sawdust from a lot of different trees, um, it very, very inexpensively, and some of them smell quite good. Um, and it's, it's, they tend to be a lot more um, cost effective than your sandalwood powders because sandalwood powders can get pretty expensive pretty fast. Um, you can get other. Here's an example right here. This is cedarwood powdered. It's already powdered up. I've already got it ground down. This is cedarwood. I think cedarwood smells awesome. Look at that. Now, before I would actually put this in a cone, I would have to grind that more. But it is all, it's pretty roughly ground as is right now. Um, here's some examples of my sandalwood. I got a light color more of a medium shade and then a red and they're already powdered up really fine I bought them that way um, let's see another wood oh right here I get this out of my yard this comes from my sycamore tree this is the bark from the sycamore tree I like I personally like the way this smells when it burns um, you can grind it up pretty fine and put it in there and I like it it's inexpensive I find it laying on the ground guys one of the things that you do need to, to make sure though is that all of your ingredients are is um, completely dry you don't want to be trying to burn um, something that's damp because um, it's not going to burn as well for you okay um, Something else, if you're making cone incense, that you're going to um, want to use is something um, gummy, a, a binder, something to help it stick together. That's where this would come into play. Gum Arabic. You can see where I get <laughs> mine from. Um, I've got used in my other container. 
Um, this is what it looks like. If you mix this with just a little bit of water, it gets really gooey really fast. But um, and that and that's how I like to do this one. To use this one is when I'm making it, I mix this in my water and then add it to um, the incense mixture. Um, some other powders. Let's see here. What do I have out here? Um, this is an herb. This isn't a wood, but this is an herb. Um, patchouli. A lot of people like patchouli. I, I like it in moderation. Um, um, let's see. I was going somewhere with all of that, y'all. You'll have to excuse me. This video is going to be very... It's going to be all over the place just because I have a terrible line of thought. Um, oh, another wood I really like. Let me get it here. Oh, here's one of my Palo Santo sticks. I love the way this smells burning. I think it smells really good. Um, so you can powder this up and use it. Um, this is Palo Santo resin. Oh, it smells so good, y'all. Love it. It smells amazing. If you've never smelled Palo Santo, you should try it. If you like woody smells. Um, let's look at some of the resins that I've got here. Um, oh, you know what? Before I get into that, because I'm just oh, phew, all over the place. This is where I was going before I started all of this. Um, some people use a lot of sandalwood because it helps with the burn. Um, some people like to take the, the charcoal, little charcoal, um, discs, grind them up because they're already self-igniting, grind them up really fine, mix it, <coughs> excuse me guys, mix it with your incense mixture, um, kind of, you know, incorporate it in, into that, which it's going to be a majority of the mixture is going to be the charcoal if you do it that way, um, and uh, make the cones that way. Um, some people, like me, use saltpeter. Um, you have to be careful with this though, guys, if you use saltpeter, um, be careful, because this is, um, it's, it's kind of volatile, guys. Um, if, if you're making incense with this, um, I think, I, can't, I wish I could remember where I, I uh, read that or saw that, but um, the general rule if you're making cone incense and you're making them self-combusting combusting and you're using saltpeter is that this be no more than 10% of the recipe. Um, if you're making it into like a powdered form that you just kind of toss on the fire um, that you're not going to be close to, you're just going to go boop and move away, um, you can use more I'm not recommending you do that. <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there. I could do it for myself, but I don't recommend anybody else do that. So don't don't take that. You, I told you, don't do that. Um, okay, let's get into the resins here. Let's look at the resins. So that beautiful Palo Santo chunk there. There's different resins you can get. Um, experiment. Like, go onto a site and buy like a sampler so that you can burn a little bit. Um, write it down. Write down your impression from it. So here is Damar. This is two different types. This is a pretty yellow and this is a really dark one. I think this one's beautiful. Let me show you guys. Look how pretty that is. That's one of the resins that I have sitting here. Um, another is the frankincense. And I, I set all these out just to show you guys different ways that you'll see it. See, look how different those look. But they're both frankincense. Here's some bigger chunks of the frankincense. Let me put all these out of the way, guys. Okay. Now, let's look at some copal. Ooh, that one's really powdery. You can't see it um, as good. Let me see. Oh, come on now. Don't 
there's a look at that one. It's kind of rough looking. Um, this is the Sumatra Dark. Here's another one. This one's a little lighter. And then here's the tiny one. Most people that see Copal or Copal, they know it. Oh, goodness. A lot of times they've seen it like this. These really pretty little golden chunks. One more I've set out here. And this is um, pine. It's, um, oh, what is it? Lodgepole pine pollen. Woo! Powdery. And there that is. Now, put all of these over here, and you guys can see in the background there, I've left something out, and I will get back to that in just a second. Um, here is myrrh, and I have two types of myrrh here, and one of them is known by this name, which I cannot say, but that is sweet myrrh, and this is your regular myrrh. Here is one of my favorite resins. That is Dragon's Blood. This is how it comes like if you get a, a big chunk of it. This is how they have it. And then you can break it apart. See, this is one that's been busted. And you just break it down into little pieces. Dragon's Blood, it grinds down really easily. I love the smell of it. Okay, this is something that I forgot. This is something that I also add to my, um, I add it to my incense when I make it, my incense cones. Um, that way I'm not using so much of my more expensive um, woods. Um, namely my, <laughs> my sandal woods. Um, this is Mako powder. And I like to add this in just to kind of cut my ingredients a little bit. It smells, it's, it's kind of got a, a kind of a neutral smell when it, um, when it burns. So by adding it to your incense recipe, it's not really going to mess with any of the smells that you're trying to create. Now, when you add or when I add um, any essential oils into um Seems like this thing keeps sliding around. Um, when I add any essential oils into my incense, I don't add much, and you really don't need much. Maybe a drop or two, because um, any oils that you're adding into um, your incense is going to affect your burn. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, yeah. All right, guys. Um, I might make another video of actually making the the cones. Um, I've never really made any more of these videos because I didn't know who would be interested or if anybody would really be interested in them. So if you are, just let me know. All right. You guys have a good one.